Maybe you're a little bit late. Uh, you got an email from me if you open that up, please. What we're focused on today, um, hopefully you have it up by now, this is a single body paragraph. This is one body paragraph from a student. So the disclaimer I gave you last time about, you know, not being jerks, basically, you guys did well. Uh, we'll just keep that train rolling. You'll notice it looks a little different from what we're used to. I've skipped the step that we took last time, wherein we identified the parts of a body paragraph. My hope is, to some degree, we all have some confidence in that now. Topic sentence, evidence, analysis, especially in those last two. I think it's pretty easy most of the time to spot evidence, and then analysis is just all the stuff that's not that, mainly, right? So I've broken it apart for you, okay? Our focus this time, having it broken apart, my hope is that'll make it a little bit easier to figure out what kind of a job we're doing with those parts, right? So the topic sentence, does it convey the main idea of the body paragraph? And does it make an argument, hopefully? The evidence, is it specific in the way that we've talked about? Uh, that's pretty much it, actually. And the analysis, that's kind of the, the, the most important part. We're gonna spend the most part on this. Does the analysis do its job? I know that's kind of vague, but does it dig into the evidence? Does it make an argument? Things like this. Take a couple minutes, look over that. I'm gonna finish that number three. Uh, very, 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 very quickly. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this, but I wanna cover a couple quick pointers uh, grammatically or whatever, syntactically in some cases. Number one, this will help all of you. The social dilemma. Does anybody know what the primary issue is there? Italicized. Longer works, like movies, album titles, if that's even still a thing really. Um, shows, like the whole, if you're talking about Breaking Bad, the show, you italicize it. Uh, smaller works, like individual poems, uh, essays, episodes. So if it's an episode of Breaking Bad, I don't know what their titles are like. The one where the dude gets shot. You know, like if that's the title of an episode, that would be in quotation marks. Social Dilemma is a movie. So it takes the house. And, uh, oh, nope, hang on, let me screw that up. Let's try that, there we go. And then we can just delete that to the end. Also, while we're here, it's the wrong there. Plenty of you guys are gonna screw that up. Um, it bumps me out a little bit, but Google caught it for us, so we fixed it. All right, I think there was one more I wanted to show you, and if it comes up, we'll talk about it. All right, talk to me about the topic sentence. In the movie The Social Dilemma, their, meaning the filmmakers, I assume, ultimate goal is to show how social media is going to be the cause of all ruin, although the director really touches on the topic of suicide, anxiety, and depression. Thoughts on this topic sentence. We have two jobs that we used to do. The main idea of the paragraph and argument. Yes? It's not really making an argument as to how it's affecting the audience or like the topics. Yeah, I mean it's it's in the um it's in the right direction, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think that is? There's a really good reason why that's pretty much impossible for them. Because it's really vague and not specific. It's way too vague. Yes. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's broad, and then I feel like just from a fiction perspective, using all of O kind of makes it like I'm saying this one thing, but yeah, I'll just, I don't know, it, it feels like. Well, to be super technical, uh, and you allowed me to do this, it's not your fault though. Uh, although wrecks that second sentence uh, syntactically, if you say although, that comma is never gonna come right after although, it would come where that period is. Uh, and then you would have some counterpoint after it. Yeah. But pretend that that's gone. The director really touches, like that's what they're trying to say. Yeah. All they're doing, and this is how we talk about drafting uh, pretty much every time, they start from a place of, ah, and then they start to narrow it down, right? Now within the first two sentences, it's, it's still pretty big, still pretty broad, but already from sentence one to sentence two, way more focused. They go from all ruin, like you wake up from a coma and there's zombies on the street, right? Like they go from that to people are sad. That's, that's way, so we're doing it. 
The issue is, and a lot of you do this, a lot of you do this, recognizing it. When you draft, potentially before you turn your homework in, yeah, go check those first couple sentences and go, did I start like in a halfway insane place? And it, like, can I address it now? And we will here in a bit. All right, so those first two sentences, like I say, we're heading in, a, in the right direction, but we need some love there. Evidence, what do you guys think? Thoughts on that? There's good things to say about it, but then there's, there's a couple issues as well. I'm gonna be jumping like forward a little bit, but there's not a whole lot of Well, of we're gonna come to that. Okay. There, yeah, there's not. And, and again, if you want to, I, I was kind of on the fence about the very last sentence of the evidence that could maybe be moved to analysis. But either way, not the, um, the ratio that we want is inverted, right? Typically, you would want your evidence to look more like this, and you would want your analysis to look a lot more like that. Um, so sure. Why do you guys think that is? We can, I mean, we can for sure talk about evidence and analysis together. Do you guys have any, any ideas why the analysis is so stilted? Yeah. I think maybe at this early stage, it's like, easier to just throw stuff on the page without like kind of summarizing the video a little bit. So, and then, uh, I feel like that yeah. Just vomit it onto there and then you end up removing some of it and then, you know, kind of breaking it down. So well, of... for sure, for sure. Every, yeah, 100% agree with you. But again, it's understanding that that might be part of the process. And I'm going to double down and say it, it is the part of the process for all of us, um, for the most part. You don't know what you want to say. We've made that clear in the first two sentences. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say the evidence might be a little labored might be a little long, okay? But I would also contend that's still them chewing on it, trying to figure out what the hell it is they even want to say about it. And if that is all part of the process, then again, before maybe you turn in the homework, you take one more pass and you go, eh, why did I say all that? What am I focused on, right? And that's kind of the issue with the evidence, which leads to the issue with the analysis. We don't focus on anything. We're trying to talk about all of that at once. And I've told you this, and I know I tell you a lot of things. What that always leads to is your brain pretty much noping out of it. You can't deal with all of that at once. You can't do it. And so you don't. What's he doing? Ah, he's manipulating you. I, know. I mean, is he sure? How? How do you know? How are you going to prove it to me? What are you going to point to and explain how that process works, right? If you do that, geez, imagine the sentences, right? Just the sentences that you could astound me with, right? So that's the trick. Um, and we got a nice menu here. The graph. I feel bad about the escalating. I don't know why Google didn't catch that. That's strange to me. Um, what do we talk about? Shoestrings, uh, and we've talked about this before, obviously, the, the rise in the preteen, uh, like hurting themselves and or suicide. Uh, we talked about the line of demarcation at 2010, 2011. Um, again, I'm not sure why users are in quotation marks. So I guess it seems like to me, they're focused on that line of demarcation, like that's they, they kind of start getting a little more in depth at that point. So we could potentially trim, let me see, all the stuff about a graph and, and this is going to bum me out. I, gotta, I can't keep looking at it. Oh, the earth is basically right here. That's, that's, yeah. All right. Um,
What's the, what's the shortcut for that? All right, all I did, I took out, it's two things. I took out the, the best way I know to describe it, the them chewing on the evidence, okay? Because there was a lot of it. Any of it is fair game. I've never, to be totally transparent with you guys, I've never had a semester where, because uh, we always talk about the scene, uh, the, the shoestring chart and all, we always talk about that scene because it's a big scene. I've never had a class not almost immediately want to talk about the fact that the graph is a shoestring. Because that's a weird choice, right? The way we've talked about it up to now has been fine, but the line of argument we keep making about the scene, really, that could just be a line graph. It doesn't need to be like coming out of a shoe, do you know what I mean? So it's an intentional choice, and it's odd. Every semester, I've taught for a couple semesters now, classes have been like, yeah, what's that about? We, we just talked about it. Um, so the point I'm making is, those first couple sentences were littered with options. The graph itself, uh, height, um, and uh, a little bit to do with his credentials and or kind of what he says specifically. Like all of that was there, but it doesn't seem like that's what we want to talk about, right? So you cut all of it, cut all of it. What do we need? What do we need to get to what we're talking about? It's that line. We mentioned height because he's the one that gives us the information. Um, we don't even say the word graph, right? Because on some level, that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in height goes, social media on smartphones here, rise in preteen, whatever, here. That's all we're setting up. Everything else, I just hacked it off, right? We don't need it. It got in our way. And now that helps us see more of what we're missing, right? So all that said, and again, we're gonna be kinder with kind of our interpretation of what analysis can be. You could make the case. Say it's like that. Already our ratio is way better, right? But we still have the problem that we don't have a lot of analysis. And if you guys want to read those two sentences again, what, what are we kind of saying here about our evidence? If you could sum it up, because I think we could. To be totally technical, it's actually one sentence. I'll fix it while you guys think. I have a handout on course stand I used to go over in classes, and uh, I don't do that anymore. You guys don't like it. Um, we have fun activity. Anyway, it's really that business after the comma, right? That's where they start to get some traction. What is Hype doing? He's, and manipulating is kind of a loaded word, but manipulating, redundant to say your mind, you into thinking social media is bad, for causing, God, it's so, they get so big again. You can tell, again, they're noping out of their analysis. Social media is bad for causing this negative impact on these young girls. That could be anything, right? A negative impact. The rate of people stubbing their toes because we're looking at our phones has probably shot up dramatically in the past 10 years. I'm making that up, but I feel like there's probably a study somewhere on toe-related injuries, right? That's a negative impact. That's a literal negative impact. Um, it's not the same thing, is it? It's not even close. Why don't we say what it is? That'd be a good start. Isn't that part of the rhetorical appeal? Just for a second. We're doing this for like two minutes. Because we've already done it. What's, what's the rhetorical appeal here that we're kind of talking? There's, there's two that's, that are being made at the same time. You pick either one. How is height manipulating uh, the, the viewer here, do you think? He's focused 
I mean, sorry, ethic, uh, uh, like ethical dilemmas. Okay. How so? Well, it's an ethical dilemma in a social media is causing people to hurt themselves. I'm understanding, like, how's that working though? Um, in in detail, like in really small uh, digestible chunks. You know what I'm saying? If we're talking about uh, ethos here, we're talking about his like credentials, basically. Oh, okay. Um, which we can totally do. I mean, he's a super qualified guy. I don't think that's not really in our evidence. Uh, you had a hand up as well. I thought. Damn. What kind of an appeal is it? We got two big ones here. I'll go ahead and pick one for us. Um, that preteen girls, so not even teenage, pre 11, 12, right? Um, the rate is fucking skyrocketing. What kind of an appeal is that? Yeah, for sure. How so? We can talk this out real quick. What emotions are involved in a drastic uptick in self harm among preteen girls. Bad. Is it? Bad. Sad. For sure. How so? Because I mean, I don't know. No, you know. Come on. Well, okay. Don't stop looking at that. You guys get you when you start reading words, they kind of invade your head. Like, don't don't read this right now. Just talk about it. I mean, you would feel sad for the girls considering what's going on with them, and then looking at the graph. What's going on with them? Slow down. Slow down. The suicide rate is going up higher due to the uh -huh. they do to the. Why does that make you feel sad for them, though? Yeah. Good. It's not fair, is it? That's one way. To, that's not the only way to talk about it. You can also feel bad for them, uh, and we, this is what we talked about last time. Uh, because they're so, you read them as so powerless in the face of all that, right? In the face of anything, again, to be totally fair, they're 11 and 12, like, come on. But in the face of this one thing that we're focused on, they have no power, uh, either in the world or even perhaps internally. They're just trying to figure out how shit works, right? It's, none of it is fair to them. They will have a shot, right? So you, my point is, you don't just feel bad about the rate going up. For sure you do, if you're not a monster, for sure. But more than that, you feel bad given some of these very specific circumstances. These are preteen girls. They don't know anything, <laughs> even about themselves. They don't. It's not fucking fair. Minus the fucking, you could talk about that in the paper. You could do that. That's the rhetorical appeal we're after. One of them, okay? We got none of that here because we know out with negative impact. Or when I bad, right? Okay. So again, to, to replay what we talked about very quickly, I would put a, a significant amount of money on the idea that the reason their analysis was so short is because they had so much evidence. If you bury yourself in evidence, it can be part of your process. It can be. But Another part of your process needs to be, okay, what am I actually focused on? What am I actually gonna dig into? I gotta trim stuff out of my way as best I can so I can get at that, so I can talk about it. And then you gotta talk about it. We didn't type any of that up because we don't have time. We gotta do a bunch today. That's a lot better. We could talk about that for a minute, okay? The other thing, I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret. You guys do this all the time. You do this all the time. The movie also goes on to show, and I'm like, fuck. All that is, every time you do it, every time you do it, is telling me two things. One, I said next to nothing about that first thing, which we already covered. That's how it happened. And I'm gonna try to do better with this next thing. It's pretty similar. My question every time is, well then why did we look at the first thing? Why'd you show it to me? I'm not saying you can't have multiple pieces of evidence. I'm not. But I am telling you, one way you tell on yourselves and you never realize it, uh, the text also, if any time you lead off your second piece of evidence with also or this, blah, as well, and all you're saying is this is the same thing. I'm 
to talk about it in a second way. And I'm like, don't, don't, please don't do that. Please don't do that. If you're going to bring up other evidence, and again, you can, ideally, it would add to whatever you had to say. Okay? Yeah. Now, technically speaking, it does, because we didn't say much about the first one, but that's not how I mean it. Okay? So, all that said, let's look back at what we have. Now we're talking about uh, Isla, okay? And we talked about this in class too. Uh, she gets negative comments about her ears. Um, she does. So, so if we just took their evidence, oh fuck, what? Something happened in my brain there. Uh, I meant to put analysis on that last one. But if we look at that first bit, what are they seeing focused on given how they're talking about the, the evidence here? What'd you say? What detail are we really, uh, hopefully, going to dig into, given how they've written about their evidence? Her response to their comments on the picture. Yeah. So again, if we're going to be super uh, focused here. It's not even her ears or the fact that she hides them. Uh, it's maybe a little bit her response to that, and it's more to do with um, this, I think, very real phenomenon where, she, uh, if you remember, she gets a couple of good comments, right? looking good girl and like all that stuff and then one piece of shit po uh, gives her the elephant emoji and like she spirals from there right the one negative comment is enough in the face of all the positive to kind of wreck her night you know that's what they seem to be focused on given how they've written the evidence here what do we do with our analysis it's already longer which is you know, probably good. Yeah. She has your audience. Yeah. So that's absolutely what they're focused on. No, oh, but what do they do? What do they do with it? I need you guys to see it. They make a mis they make a pretty bad mistake pretty quick. Immediately. Immediately. Right. First of all, they start out great. Other than not giving me the possessive apostrophe, which you guys are also scared of. Um, if something owns something, in this case, Isla owns her response, that's an apostrophe S. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, I don't know what the hell this is about. That, no. All right, anyway, this first sentence is exactly what we thought they would do. They're doubling down for the reader. They're saying, by the way, this is what I'm focused on. That's awesome. That is great. There's another thing you guys do that you may not realize. You have what I call a shot clock in your head when it comes to the length of a body paragraph. Any paragraph, for that matter. Is anyone not familiar with the concept of a shot clock? Okay. In like basketball, I'm sure it's in other sports, but basketball is the one I know. Uh, uh, I think in the 70s, or so, they invented a shot clock. Because before that, especially at the end of games, if your team was up, they would pass the ball around for minutes, and it was torture. So now, uh, when a team has the ball, they have X amount of time to get a shot off, and if they don't, well, then the other team gets the ball. It speeds up the game, right? You guys have a shot clock for paragraphs. And when you get near the end, it doesn't matter what you told me you're gonna say, or what's happening, you're gonna stop. You're just gonna stop. You're gonna throw up a shot. Um, and it was longer, because remember we trimmed evidence and all that. So they got right there, and they're like, I'm gonna focus on this, and they went, wait. Unconsciously, they went, oh, this is, this, this is a paragraph. I'm done. And so they finished it. Now how do you finish really fast? You get really big. You get really broad. In this case, immediately. So what happens? Honest to God, the other, because I know sometimes I say things that may not make all the sense in the world to you. The other way to think about this is, if it sounds, and you guys know this language, if it sounds or feels like a book report, if it sounds or feels like an essay you had to write in high school, it's probably not what we're looking for, okay? I'm sure those had a purpose. I don't know how great it was, but, Read this. These big, so already we're getting big just in our descriptions. Social platforms can cause a girl's mental health to deteriorate. No, you're kidding. Uh, then we get his point about 
I mean, yeah, we already covered that. He thinks it's bad for, for a young girl. So what? We haven't said anything. We haven't said anything. So there's two things we gotta do. What do you imagine the first one is? This one's easy. This one's painful, but it's easy. Ah! Because of Isla's response, that's what we're focused on, shows the audience, despite all the good comment that she had some nice ones, uh, she only focused on the bad one. Brought down her self-esteem, we need a hyphen there in a matter of minutes. Okay, so what? Because that's true and super specific. <sighs> Rhetorically speaking, how does that affect the viewer, you know? How does that move you or, or that lead you to think about it? Anything like that? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's showing in them just how vulnerable these, especially these younger people are. Okay. To the um, negative feedback that she's using. Yeah, well, like, to get broad for a second, like, the effects of social media, right? But, but, but again, the, the idea, the vulnerability. We're kind of doubling down on what we said a moment ago about feeling sad uh, because it's so unfair, because she's so vulnerable, because she's so powerless in the face of this thing, right? Okay, good. So, so far, um, we're kind of agreeing with what we said earlier about the uh, sort of line of demarcation, right, around 2010, 2011. Okay. Is there anything, and this is an honest question, like I have thoughts, but I'm curious if you have any is there anything more we could say about her response other than just she's vulnerable to this stuff? Like, what do you do with the idea, for instance? I mean, I, I would contend this is a real mechanism. You might get 20 nice comments, you know? But if you get one, or one shitty person is like, ah, but you, you know, smell, or whatever, like, well, but does that does that do anything to you? Do you do you respond to that information at all? That idea, perhaps? Does it resonate? All, all it takes is one comment. Why? Why do you say that? I guess. Look, here's what I'm getting at. Does that? Because I want to take this in a slightly different direction, if we can. Does that strike you as true? Yes. Why? I think most of you agree. But I'm, I'm curious if we could try to put it into words. Why do, why do you think that is? Or why do you agree? Yeah? To me, that bad comment was from someone that's not scared to like lie to Isla. Like, she feels as if, as if her friends are like, lying to her. Like, she assumes, so if I, I want to make sure I understand you, she assumes the negative comment is truthful because the other people care too much for her to let her know that she, she has an elephant ear. Yeah. Isn't that a weird thing that we do? Yeah. You assume the douchebag is the good person, essentially? You know? What kind of backwards, and I, I think we're sort of prone to that. So now, we're not just talking about the fact that Viola is vulnerable, which she absolutely is, right? Okay, but now we're also saying Unintentionally, I would contend, I don't think anyone wants this, uh, that vulnerability kind of gets um, preyed upon. Uh, not just by like big social media companies that we're talking about, but by the, the people that are on them, right? I would assume this is some other like 12 year old girl or something, you know? And she could be a monster. Seems like at this moment she kind of is, but she could also just be 12. And barely a human, honestly. And she, you know, and they just say things all the time. And she's not honest. She's a she's borderline idiot, and she's twelve. But we assume, oh, she has the this this insight that I have to listen to. I have to take it on. So now we're not just talking about vulnerability. We're talking about how it resonates with the audience. We're talking about how it sort of mirrors our lived experience. It feels realistic. It lines up with how we've seen the world. 
So now we're talking about potentially, we're not just sad for Isla, we identify with her a little bit here. Maybe, maybe we're sad for ourselves a little bit in this moment, right? We've added to the argument, is what I'm saying, at this stage. All right, I'm losing you guys pretty hard. <clears throat> Um, I mentioned we would fix the, fix the topic sentence. Again, I'm going to not do that because you guys are almost asleep. But that's gigantic. That's way too big. It's way too big. We, no, never. If nothing else, uh, we talked out you know, what we need to add here. Even just doing something more like this would be better. Because it's more focused. Let's talk about introduction. I know I ask this all the time. I got too many different classes. You all blend together. We haven't done this yet, have we? No. Outstanding. All right. Introductions. I feel you. I've talked to you before about body paragraphs. I do the three eyes business. This is a little bit different. Introductions for me have four parts. Okay. You guys know some of these. When I say introduction, what are some of the parts you know we need? Thesis. Thesis, for sure. Where's that guy from? Oh, man, my bad. Um, if we were in France, then we come first. Okay. And it's weird because they invented the essay. Here's something you'll never need to know. Essay is the French verb to try, to attempt. So an essay is an attempt to like prove something, convince somebody. That's how they get the word. You made an essay right then when I was wrong. But you're not wrong. I mean, again... The French way is, uh, how, weirdly, how we do body paragraphs. They do the thesis first thing. And then the rest of the paper is trying to prove that thesis. We kind of invert it. Eh. Anyway, thesis. Any other parts? You guys know one more. A hook. A hook. Where does that guy come from? Very first thing. Much more American. I put a question mark on it because it is technically... Uh, optional. You don't have to have it, but you guys like the hook, you know. What's a hook do? Grabs the reader. Grabs the reader. In the words of Dave Chappelle, "Gotcha, bitch!" Right? When he impregnates Oprah, it's an old sketch. Don't worry about it. But like, you get them in. Um, the thing I'll say is supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to be attention grabbing. You guys weirdly tend to have kind of a high bar for attention grabbing. Bear in mind. This is an essay, an attempt, in your English 1101 class. So this is not um, like Breaking Bad level, I'll use that example again, entertaining. Like you don't have to do that in the first sentence of your paper. I don't even know what that would look like, okay? Do you guys happen to know any of the sort of modes that a hook can operate in? There's a couple classic ones. Question. What kind of question? Uh, specific time. Good. A rhetorical question. Does anybody know what a, a rhetorical question is? It's a question that doesn't demand an answer. Okay. There's another way to think about it, but I have an example to give you. So, rhetorical question. If your mother says, did I ask for your opinion? What are you supposed to say? Nothing. You don't say anything. But she just asked you a question implying she would like your opinion, right? What is she really implying? Shut your mouth. Yeah, it's a rhetorical question. She's communicating that idea without ever saying that. She's using different language entirely, right? That's how a rhetorical question works. Um, you can start with an interesting fact, which I get might kind of fly in a paper like this, right? You know? 80% of whatever, uh, of phone users have stubbed their toe in the past year. You know, like what if you find some kind of... Can't you start with a quote? You can start with a quotation. That's trickier because typically you want to lead into it or at the very least exit from it with your own language. And that's hard to do at the top of a paper. Huh? It does. It does. 
But the point I was gonna make, the reason that's really hard to do in a paper like this, it's two to three pages. And again, we've talked about what that means for you guys. Two pages. It's two pages. Um, if you're starting with somebody else's words and you gotta do the kind of acrobatics to lead out of that into your own words, I just don't know if you have the length in, a, in this paper. The movie is like an hour and a half or whatever, so like they got time to do that. In a longer paper, that's more of a classic movie. You could do that, basically. Two to three pages, I would probably avoid it. Rhetorical question, quotation, fact. You can also do an anecdote, which I would also probably avoid in this paper for similar reasons. Anecdotes tend to be longer. All right. What happened? Somebody's making like a puppy noise or something? Anecdote, short story. The thing I shared with you guys right before class about my five-year-old trying to kill himself, it's an anecdote. Small personal experience. Yeah. All right. All right. Hook is optional. Thesis is not, but we'll talk about him in a second. Two more in the middle. Any ideas? Contents? Is that one? Kind of, depending on what you mean. I call it something else, but uh, what do you mean? Like sort of introduce, you know, what you're going to be talking about, but it's not a thesis. I call it something else. Yeah. Call it the roadmap. And we'll talk about why in a second. Before that, you guys usually know to do this, but I'm going to list it as part of my uh, sort of paradigm anyway. Number two, the first, and is not optional, you need to introduce the text, okay? The reason I always make sure to list it is this. If you don't, in every semester, I get a couple that don't. If you don't introduce the text, do you know what you will talk to me about for the entire paper? Random shit. If you don't introduce the text, you will talk about things that are associated with the movie, but you will not talk about the movie, and it's wild. I don't know how people do it, but they do it. Two, three pages on, oh, uh, I guess in this case, usually it's your social media use. I'm like, who, why do you think that's what we, we were doing? Um, but here's how you fix it. Have a hook, don't, I don't care, it's optional. After that, in The Social Dilemma, and it, uh, directed by whatever the hell that guy's name is. Jeff Orlovsky. That sounds good. Look it up, make sure, right? Um, but in this, directed by this guy, one to two sentence summary. How would you sum up this movie anyway in like two sentences? How do we even do that? We go to the next page. Holy cow, all right. Take it like that? Your, I think it's she off or whatever. No, one of those. Is that right? In that guy, and yeah, you would want to check. Actually, if you're not sure, look at that. What happens? How would you summarize it? Uh, critics? No, not critics. No, 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 leave them out. What happens, like, if you were telling a friend uh, that you watched this documentary, how would you describe it to them? A bunch of professionals. Uh, come and talk about the dangers of social media um, and its impact on society. Former heavy smokers. Burgeoning means increasing. All right, is there anything else? Because uh, we got another sentence to play with if we want, uh, that we would want to include in our summary. They also use a dramatization. Good, that's kind of like the other half of the movie, right? Mm -hmm. That family. The family is used, you know, to help the audience connect with whatever the... Hang on that for two seconds. That's actually good. Right? Sit on that for just a second. Um,
that's kind of getting to what you were talking about at the end. Uh, could you give it to, give that to us again if you don't mind? Um, a drum, dramatis, a dramatization is used to help the audience connect with um, the ideas that are presented by the speaker. Um, okay. Well, I'm a bar simulator, so okay. I'm going to type this, and then we're going to talk about what we're doing. Um, started. We skipped a hook. We might do one, we might not. It's optional. We went right to introducing the text. Um, in that guy's The Social Dilemma. And then we have two sentences <clears throat> of summary. Okay? So that's this one. What we actually started doing, and you just kind of got us going, is the beginning of the roadmap. The roadmap, the reason I call it that, is two things. If, if a thesis is meant to be your argument for an entire paper, right? And I know you guys know that because you learned like three things in high school and not one, okay? Your thesis by its very nature is gonna be really broad. Granted, it's a thesis statement and not a thesis sentence, so it can be like two to three sentences, whatever, okay? Still, if you're going to sum up whatever argument you're making in an entire paper in two to three sentences, you have to get real broad real vague, honestly, in some sense. To help make sense of that before we get there, you're gonna break down some of those bigger ideas, right? Uh, within a couple sentences. So it sounds like to me, just given kind of what we're doing right here, our thesis in some way, shape, or form is gonna consider that family, or at the very least is gonna consider the ways that the film tries to make these ideas relatable, right? Cool. So it's a roadmap that we're going to try to fill out a little bit more that's going to help me follow this very broad statement. The other reason I call it a roadmap, if your thesis, and it is, is meant to sum up your entire paper, and if your roadmap is meant to help me understand that, well then, given that logic, the roadmap should also clue me into what I'm going to see throughout the body of the paper. You follow me? That's also why I call it a roadmap. There should be no surprises in your paper. Some of you are under this misconception. Uh, you think your essays are like a, a magic show. They're not. Every semester I have students saying something like, I didn't want to give it away. And I'm like, what are you talking about? There should be no surprises in your paper. That's a bananas idea. That, look, some of you have right now. That's crazy. What are we doing? There's no twist ending in your essay. Right, like I'm saying, you want me literally and figuratively on the same page as you, okay? I know, it's a cheap joke, but you, you want me on the same page as you. Um, you want to start convincing me of whatever you're gonna argue right here. You want me going, oh yeah, I can see that, and then I get to the, I can see that too. You want me just constantly kind of affirming whatever you have on the page. So when I get to your thesis, you've already sold me. And then when I get to the body of your, of your paper, I'm right on board again, right? But if I get to something I'm not prepared for, my immediate response for thinking about rhetoric is gonna be, huh? That's not, that's not helpful for your purposes, okay? All right, so we're talking about, uh, oh yeah, I left this hanging here. We're talking about relating to the family. Now, to be perfectly clear, we are inventing an introduction. This paper does not exist, although I'm willing to bet by the time we finish today, it might. No, my point is you guys are going to read this. You're going to go home and try to just write this paper, okay. which is an interesting thing to do. Um, but anyway, if we say uh, we're looking at a family, they present all kinds of problems, you know, that you know, the either we would encounter ourselves, or I gave us a bit of an out with the headlines business, at the very least it's something we would have heard of, you know, and you see what it looks like with real people, okay? Problems like 
what? Like one or two things that happened in his family that we might talk about in a paper. Mm. More specific. Be specific here. Um, yeah. We got a nice menu, right? What happens to the family? What are the couple things that you guys remember? Like, how so? Like, if, when you say that, are you thinking of any moment in particular? Yeah, like, specifically the dinners. Okay, so like, when she takes their phones and they can't. Yeah, they they can't okay, problems like, um, that amount of specificity scares me. I know. Well, look, the reason for that is, again, you guys, I would wager 90% of your essay writing experience is in-class essays. You'd have to be a machine to be super specific in that scenario, right? Um, again, to be fully transparent, I kind of am. But most people aren't like me. And it's, it's, you have time. So if you're writing at home and you're not doing this, that's okay. But know that at some point you gotta go back, you gotta get specific. It will help you, I promise it will, in the long run. And we're gonna talk about why in a minute, okay? But it will help you to force yourself to do this. For the sake of giving ourselves a little bit more options, um, can we think of one more problem? We had the stilted dinner conversation, which for sure happened. That moment when dad's like, let's talk about politics to the 15 year old, you know? There's a couple other things. Who are, you, who are you thinking about? Oh, the island. Oh, the island. Um, yeah, we can do that. Um, as such, problems like still dinner conversation and um, oh my Uh, as such, those problems, um, all right, all we've said here, all we've bothered to say here. We've gotten pretty specific about two things that, to be totally honest with you, we're kind of promising the reader we're gonna bring up in our paper. We may not, that may change. What does that mean we gotta do after we write the paper if we go back and we're like, I didn't talk about that shit at all. Change it. You change it, it's easy, right? You can do that. And you just rewrite it. Yeah, maybe you end up talking about two other things or, or whatever, you just change it. It's not hard. This isn't, a, this isn't like in stone, okay? But for right now, that's probably what we're thinking about talking about. And more importantly, or at least just as important, is how we're gonna talk about it. And that's what I gave us at the end. Uh, it's not just that we experience these things with the family, which we should probably talk about in a paragraph, but that we, we understand them as a result of seeing them through the family, if you follow what I'm saying. The point we're kind of making here is, again, to quote the youth, it would hit a little different if the movie was just experts in chairs talking to a camera. You could get the same information, but it would, it would affect you differently than seeing it played out uh, by these actors, right? And that's all we're getting at. So maybe that's a body paragraph for us. All right. I mean, honestly, the body paragraph we've been working on uh, up to now would probably work really well for the, uh, that may be where you came up with it, uh, the Isla business. Yeah. And the, yeah. For sure. Maybe that's our first body paragraph. Cool. All right. Now, this is a two to three paragraph essay. Fuck me. Paper. Page. There it is. Two to three page paper. I did it. Um, how many paragraphs do you figure that is? You got your intro and your conclusion. Okay. Four. Four to five. Four to five. Four to five. Think about it. Here. Draw a picture. 
Let's be bold. Let's say it's three pages. All right. Oh, when you said pages, I thought that meant front and back. So I was like, okay. Um, look. That's all our MLA business, which I think we're supposed to talk about today, but we'll talk about it tomorrow, next time. Um, you have paragraphs, say that's your intro. Call you paragraph one, paragraph two, and look at that. You're on the third page with your conclusion. Probably four paragraphs. If you got kind of skimpy paragraphs, maybe five, but that's it for this paper. So if we've already set ourselves up for one body paragraph, we could possibly only need one more. Um, can you guys help me think of like one more thing, this hypothetical paper we might talk about? Anything else at all from the movie um, that might be worth considering? The data. You have any more stories than that? What data? The data about, um, you know, the higher, uh, someone else had that. I feel like I'm giving the same idea over and over again. You're fine, man. Um, I think I know what you're saying. Well, we kind of brought up the graph with Isla, so let's leave that behind. Let's yeah. do something else. I mean, we could potentially have that in another paragraph, but for the sake of this example, let's, let's do something else. Something else that happens in the movie. What do you guys think? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, not to talk about Isla so much, but like, her like waking up and saying that he was dying. Yeah. Look, I wouldn't be shocked if some of you wrote like totally Isla centric papers. She's a wild character. A lot of stuff happens. Yeah. Um, could we possibly talk about like the brother and how the. That idiot, yeah. Yeah, and the, um, I want to say like the social media impact. On him, but kind of just touch base on whatever happens. Well, there is one scene in specifically. To who? To Ben. To Ben? Yeah. All right. Well, we have some traction there. We'll leave Isla alone because actually we've talked about her for like two weeks now. But for sure, you could do that. You could for sure do that. Um, let's let's give Ben his due. He's a moron. All right. Well, uh, what scene are you thinking about? Well, I was he's 15, by the way. He's allowed to be a moron. Maybe that's pure thing about his skin. Maybe. Well, no, you can go. Go for it. What scene? It's like the scene where he's, so there's an expert talking about how, you know, manipulation is at the very heart of social interaction, because it's um, social media, right? Yeah. And then Ben is about to go up and talk to this girl, mm -hmm. right? The girl that like, clearly digs him. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's about to do it, and then he's sucked away into his phone. Are you talking? I'm trying to picture the scene. Are you talking about when like they're they're sitting and it looks like him and his just, buddy? Yeah, and they were they just it looks like they just got out of gym or something. Yeah, and he's like, hey man, go talk to I can't remember her name, uh, Vanessa, right? And and he's like, Ugh. does any? We don't necessarily have to have this in the intro, but does anybody remember what it is that distracts him specifically? The AI is like the Jonathan. Yeah, they send him some kind of notification. It's like it's like, look, your new friend is on. Oh, like a friend is nearby. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, she's nearby, damn it. Uh-huh, and then okay. it's the phone instead of actually talking to her. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so something like, um, we also travel. struggles already often um, I know that's putting it lightly but, um, often has trouble with uh, has trouble with real world interactions um, Okay, what about that? Real quick, right? Because we're gonna spell it out in a body paragraph. But we gotta give a, a, a bit of an, uh, an idea of our argument here. 
What about that scene where, again, he's with his buddy, um, and they're talking about dumb 15-year-old stuff, and then his buddy goes, hey, man, Sheila's right there. And he's like, what? The phone, though. Um, what? What? I started to say something. I don't want to answer. Nah. Oh, it's all right. I guess it's starting to illustrate how the algorithmic manipulation of people is pulling them away from real substantial interaction. For sure. What about that, though? Like, again, we push on it just a little further. Like, what does that do to you guys? There's a couple of ways, rhetorically speaking, we can think about it. And I'm just curious. What that moment, if you can take yourself back there in your in your memory, does to you. Like, I'm gonna lead you here, I guess, for the sake of time. Uh, do you agree, disagree with like how that scene plays out? He's almost like disappointed in him that he just like totally screwed up his opportunity to Yeah. Make a new friend at the very We could we could go down that road. Why why did you land upon disappointed, do you think? Um, I don't know, like, because I mean, it's like, the, like you said, like his friend was you know, hyping him up so much to talk or whatever, and she just, mm -hmm. they just continued to chat with him or whatever. Well, it seems like he's just in complete ignorance of the yeah. of social cues going on around him. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe that. Okay, uh, yeah, you had something too. I was gonna say um, it's more so disappointing that he leans more towards his phone instead of making actual human interaction with the person yeah. he's been wanting to talk to. It's just kind of like a pointless idea. Oh. His friend would be like hyping him up. Yeah. Him you, just give him notification and instantly go off his phone. Yeah. You, she sparked something in it's, you. It, it, it's sad because it shows that technology is at a point where it can give you more enjoyment than, like, it's, it's advanced enough that you can enjoy it more than interacting with a real person. Yeah. I'm going to ask the stupid question, but there's a point to this. Why is that sad? Because, like, technology is only going to get better and make it more difficult to yeah. pursue physical interactions and relationships and stuff where, you know, like, you can't, obviously, our, our ability to adapt socially as, as real people. Yeah. It's a lot slower pace compared to technology. So yeah, yeah, and they, they briefly touch on that in the movie as well. But it, so it's this idea, um, it's not just sad, it's not just disappointing, which is true, but all of that is somehow connected to the idea that like Ben is missing out yeah. on something. Um, all right, so. Um, And we would have to find her name. Does anyone happen to remember it? I would assume not. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember her name. Um, Bad bitch, number one. Well, we'll do that. Lisa. I don't know. But you, you have to fix it. Go find her name, okay? We just don't have time right now. Um, it's worth pointing out that this person, um, It's not perfect, but it's all right. And, and again, all we're doing, we're giving windows into what we're gonna highlight, but also what we're gonna argue in our paper, okay? And again, to our earlier point, 
we're writing an introduction from scratch. So whatever we do in the body of the paper, we'll probably alter this to some degree. So we revisit this, right? But at this stage, this is what we have with a little bit of time we have left. So if we're looking at our roadmap, which would be uh, that business, right? Pretty much. Um, can we try to think about how these ideas we've raised might be connected? Are there any through lines, any themes in this highlighted thing? It's very good site. It's a pretty good site for you. Like I said, this, this concept of disconnection, anything else? The, we also travel with some of these characters. It's kind yeah. Of, I feel like we empathize with them. Yeah, you know, we, we relate, we empathize. Okay, good. Yeah. We'll roll with that. Something like, um, I mean, it's kind of easy to say that because it's clearly the entire point that we come with everything. Uh, nah, maybe one more question. But it's a big part. It's a big part for sure. Um, among these many arguments, So what we've done here, this is what's called a working thesis. This is a thesis. You'll notice, uh, number one, it's an argument. It's saying the film is doing this, and it's something we have to prove, we'd have to talk about, so that's good. But also, like I told you probably half an hour ago or something, um, it's pretty broad, right? That's how that works. It's two sentences that's going to sum up two to three pages. It's going to be broad. So you need the stuff that comes before it, okay? You need that stuff. And if we think about it the other way, that stuff gave us this. I don't know if you've ever done this, and that's a joke because I know you have, if you've ever sat there trying to write a thesis for like 20 minutes. You, where do I start? Because you can't start there. You can just summon a two to three page argument because you're a sad wizard? No, you can't do that. If your brain doesn't work like that, you gotta build to it. That's what this was, okay? Last but not least, and then I'll, I'll come to your question. I wanna emphasize, it's a working thesis. All that means, just like the topic sentences you write on your body paragraphs, uh, even if they're headed in the right direction, which the one we started with today was, it wasn't what it needed to be, okay? And we figured out, looking at that body paragraph, more of what it needed to be, right? Same rules apply here. Might this be your thesis when you're done in a perfect world? For sure. Might it also, though, only be part of what you talk about? Or might you change your mind halfway through? Not, not on purpose, but you just do something else? Yeah, for sure. So again, after you write a draft of the paper and you have a much better idea, whatever the hell it is you, you talk about, go back to your intro, look at it. What did I do, what did I not, what do I need to move around? All right, so it's a working thesis, it's not done. You had a question? No. Okay. Uh, State. I was just gonna, yeah, I was just gonna say, actually like the last essay I wrote, uh -huh. I didn't even use a thesis, I just wrote the paper and made one later. That's probably the better way to do it actually, but I just know 90% uh, of the time that's not how you guys operate. So. Any questions or statements? Yeah. How do we make an appointment with the writing center? Aha, okay. Um, 
you get in touch. Uh, I'm a little bit worried at this stage because they just moved, like right before the semester. I don't know if all the information I have on the syllabus is correct. Okay. Um, you can Google them, like UWG Writing Center. They're also in Boyd. Uh, like I'm going there after this class, so fun. Um, you can, uh, but you make an appointment. Uh, the dude named Alex, he's, he's nice. You can email, you can call. Uh, you can make an appointment with me if you want, which makes sense. Or you can make an appointment with somebody else if like this isn't doing it for you. you know? um, whatever you want. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they got people in there all the time. Uh, they're good at what they do. So. Any other questions? All right, for next time. Oh, and it's in Boyd, but did I say that? Yes. Oh, so, fuck me. It's in Boyd, second floor of the writing center. Um, all right. Next time, introductions, but you write your own. Uh, it's on course 10. Also, I'm going to send you, hopefully, very, 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 very soon, like in the next 30 minutes, uh, our information for turnitin.com. That's how we're gonna turn in rough drafts and more importantly, final drafts. So you gotta sign up. Um, I'm gonna send that to you. It's gonna be at the top of your inbox. Do that, make it happen. All right, I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you.